who joins the charity Barda UK, which deals with illnesses. Uh, no, we can't go to her at the moment. Can't go to her. We will be going to Wendy Fox from Barda UK a little later on because we need to talk more about this. And perhaps you have more information on this. Has it affected your family? Would you call us on 08459 You can email me, gordon.astley at bbc.co.uk. And you can text me on 07786 207070. 07786 207070. I'm looking through to my team now. Is it a nod or a shake? Are we going to Wendy now? It's a nod. So let's go to Wendy Fox, who joins the charity Barda UK, which deals with illnesses caused by tick bites. Hi there, Wendy. Hi there. Hi. Um, Barda UK, what is, what's the Barda for? It stands for Borreliosis and Associated Diseases Awareness. Bor Borreliosis is the disease that's caused um, by a tick bite. It's it, the, the pathogen that causes Lyme disease is called Borrelia, and there's lots and lots of different strains of Borrelia. There's over, over 300 strains. And many of them haven't been studied, so Borreliosis is the correct term for it because it's caused by a, the organism called Borrelia. And you've had it, haven't you? Uh, very severely, yes. Yeah, um, I contracted it through my work as a zoologist, and um, it's left me uh, paralysed in a wheelchair. Uh, I've got a heart condition where I'm on oxygen. Um, I'm now blind, um, and it, it's I lost a kidney to it as well. It caused uh, partial renal failure so it can be extremely serious but can I just pick up on a couple of things that were said previously um, one is that you, you just said that um, taking them out with tweezers is the wrong thing to do well in fact that is actually a myth um, the safest way to remove ticks is with either tweezers or a special tick removal tool and the reason for this is because if you um, put anything on them or burn them or freeze them off they instantly go into a, a fight and flight mode and they regurgitate what they've ingested back into your bloodstream and this uh, also any any pathogens any any germs viruses bacteria whatever's inside it will then go back into you now there is a correct way to remove them with tweezers but the, the, the old advice where it says you shouldn't remove them with, with tweezers is because people fear that when they're not removed correctly you leave the head in and this can cause infection and septicemia and other problems but remove cor correctly with tw tweezers then you know it's the safest way to do it now on our website we um, provide leaflets with all these instructions and we also supply um, tick removal tools as well so there is safe ways to to do it you mustn't smother them with vaseline aftershave alcohol or anything like that because it will cause them to be stressed and to regurgitate because when they cement themselves in um, they actually have a cutting tool that goes into the skin they cement themselves in and then they start to feed so they cannot get away quickly and, and if you cause them to be upset then they will try to get away quickly regurgitate the meal and try to release the grip so this is what co can predominantly cause infection is bad tick removal well there are lots of myths as you say we're getting lots of reaction to this w wendy don't go away i've got judy in bex hill who, who wants to ask a question judy what's your question well actually she's just answered it bless her it was <laughs> how, how do you safely remove it because it didn't come up with the last lady but she's just actually been right through it and, and answered my question which is great <laughs> <laughs> about removing it uh, it's interesting this isn't it, isn't it wendy because this is a thing that one would presume isn't that sort of general um there's a, quite a bit of it around i mean and you said to me you said it, it could have been worse you lost your kidney left you paralyzed partially blind i don't see how it could actually be worse and the uh, the other thing is not all tick bites are infectious are they no that's right there, there's a, uh, only a proportion but unfortunately the proportion of the infection rate is rising um, due to the, the also the tick population is rising due to lots of factors um, global warming for one because the, the season that is the right uh, temperature and humidity for them is, is lasting longer but in fact studies um, have actually shown that ticks will um, be active all year round and at a temperatures as low as 3.5 degrees um, it is becoming a problem um, there was a, um, a, a an expert review by a panel on new and emerging inf infections in 2004 which stated that Lyme disease was a significant public health threat. But having said that, what I want to say is that people shouldn't panic. They shouldn't think, oh, I mustn't go out. What they need to do is they need to make sure that they learn about ticks, that they learn how to recognize them, how to remove them. Um, where they're likely to be and, and dispel some of the myths. I mean, ticks do not jump, they do not fly, 
Um, so, you know, they need to learn how, how they are likely to be um, bitten and also then how that they can protect themselves. They can, um, as Justine said, they can use repellent. Um, it's important not to go walking in shorts in hot weather and in the countryside because it gives them an ap ample opportunity to attach. And also pets as well. Pets can suffer from Lyme disease equally. Um, so correct removal of ticks from pets is important and making sure that your pets are kept um, with with products like, say, Frontline, which, which repels ticks and kills them if they attach. So that there's lots of things that they can do, and and I, you know, I, being outside and, and exercising is one way of keeping yourself healthy and good mental health. So, you know, please don't be afraid to go out. Just make sure that you're aware. You wouldn't get into your car without buckling up your seatbelt. So, you know, don't go outside being completely ignorant of ticks and what they can do. So, will people like ramblers and field sports people? They'll they'll be aware of ticks, won't they? they? Yeah, they are indeed. But having said that, until this year, there's been a huge amount of misinformation about. As I say, you know, primarily is how to remove ticks, and a lot of that misinformation is 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 still, um, you know, still we're trying to to educate the general public and groups like the ramblers. I mean, the ramblers are, are very aware, and a lot of field sports um, groups are aware as well. And we are actually supported by a lot of these groups in in our, our educational projects. Wendy Tim's just emailed me. He said, "When you've got the little beggar out, what what are you supposed to do with it?" Right. Well. Our advice is, because uh, there are a significant uh, proportion of ticks that could infect you, not every bite, even if the tick is infected, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will contract the disease, but obviously the possibility is there. So our advice is, if you've, still, if you've found the tick, remove it correctly, put it in a plastic bag with the date of the removal and stick it in your freezer for a while, because if you become ill, it can be useful to identify what you're, you're ill with, because a lot of tick-borne infections, the symptoms are very similar. And also tests as well for particularly Lyme disease. And the tests that test for Lyme disease rely on the presence of antibodies. So if the immune system is suppressed, it won't produce antibodies. So quite, you know, there's a quite significant number of people who have been infected that actually test negative. So it's a good idea to keep the tick. So you know, if you do become ill, and especially if you've had a negative test, if you can then test the tick, you've got an idea of what you're infected with. And as regards the bite site itself, as soon as you remove it, disinfect it thoroughly, check it thoroughly with a, with a magnifying glass to make sure that there's no parts left in. If they are, remove them carefully and thoroughly disinfect again. You should also not remove ticks with your bare hands because it's possible to become infected through breaks in the skin if you get any of the tick stomach contents on your fingers or through your mucous membrane so if you touch your eyes or, or your mouth or your nose afterwards if you've got any infectious organisms it is possible for them to enter that way although it's not very common um, so really removing them with gloves is, is the best way to do it and then afterwards Justine mentioned about the rash and that's quite right there is what's called a classic EM rash erythema migrans to Lyme disease but the problem is that l as few as 40% of people present with this rash so don't assume that if you have not had a rash and you're displaying symptoms that you haven't got it because, you know, this may not be the case. And also as well, a lot of the literature describes a rash that looks like a bullseye when in fact there's a lot of um, what you call atypical rashes that don't look like a bullseye that are associated with the Lyme disease. So again, that's something you need to be aware of. Wow, Wendy. Wow. <laughs> What we're going to do is put all your information and all the mediation service numbers and Bardi UK on our action desk, and we're giving out the number in just a little while. But I, I hope you get on well. Thank uh, Wendy Fox, thanks for sharing all that information with us. And uh, 20 minutes later, I think we know far, in fact, far too much about ticks. But thank you so very, very much. An absolutely fascinating subject. God bless you, my darling. Thank you. You're welcome. That's uh, Wendy Fox from charity Bardi UK. We were talking ticks.